Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm gonna need you to buckle up for this spicy Reddit wedding drama. Did I wear white to my cousin's wedding? I don't know, did ya? Did ya wear white to your cousin's wedding? I was at a family event the other day and a cousin who hasn't spoken to me in years, regardless of my reaching out, was there. So I decided to ask her what's wrong. Her answer shocked me. She snapped at me. Why would I talk to you after you wore a white dress to my wedding? And my flabbers were gusted. What is a flabber? Like, can we just discuss this really quick? In my view, my flabber is like, you know that like arm squish that's like down there, the squishiness? That's a flabber. I'm not sure why those would be gasted, but we'll go with it. In my opinion, I absolutely did not wear white to this wedding. For context, I was eight months pregnant with my twins and my husband just got You're fired. fired. So I bought the only dress I could afford that fit me, which was a black dress with some white flowers on it. Oh, another one, eh? I could not find photos of me at the wedding, but I did find a pic of the dress online, so it will be posted in the comments. Okay, this, this, this is what you wore? That's a black dress. For those of you who need some context, it is my channel and I have the last say. This right here is a black dress. I tried to explain this and everyone ganged up on me saying that wearing any white at all is trying to upstage the bride. So what do you think? Does this count as wearing white? This black maternity dress is trying to upstage the bride? Can you say a little insecure? If she felt upstage with you wearing that dress, that sounds like a her problem, okay? Give me a freaking break, dude. Update, first as a warning, sit down and buckle up and keep all hands and feet inside the vehicle because this is one hell of a ride, okay? Maybe, maybe we're on a roller coaster, so let's just pull it down. Have that nice old carny strap us in. Sorry in advance for speller and grammar issues. I'm dyslexic and no problemo. And sorry in advance for all the petty sarcasm. I'm in a bit of a mood now. I will also put it in these. For those like me who can't tell sarcasm sometimes. So my sister, 22, sarcasm. <laughs> Convince me, 30, sarcasm. I'm just kidding, I get it. To post this earlier and she decided to get in contact with the cousin's little sister who we will call Anne, 23. Cousin who we will call Tina, 42, was cut off by Anne due to incidents at her wedding that I was blissfully unaware of. Ooh, tell me the tea, baby girl. According to Anne, Tina feels like I've been in a decades long battle to upstage her with everything I do. Were you actually trying to upstage her or were you just existing? Because there is a difference. If someone feels threatened by you or jealous of you, they will always feel like you're upstaging them. But if you're literally just existing and that is your reality, there's just a little bit of resentment. Maybe a lot. <laughs> she hated me since the moment I was born. Right, cause baby's upstage. I feel so upstaged by this baby. She's really trying to steal my spotlight with her little baby toes. I'm autistic and ADHD, so there may have been some hints throughout the years, but I truly had no clue this was happening. Well, oftentimes we don't. When someone secretly resents us, you know, we can feel it sometimes, but generally they don't like to admit it because it looks bad on them. So some things Tina hates me for, according to Anne. One, being born as the second grandchild. I guess I knew that she wanted to be an only grandchild. Okay. Two, being born only three months before her birthday. I obviously had control of when my parents conceived me and did it to be petty. <laughs> Jeez. Graduating on time from high school. I really didn't drop out for a few years just to make her look bad. <laughs> what a Been there, done that. Wow. If only, if only you could have considered your feelings when you graduated on time. Number four, only ever being with one man. I'm sorry, I should have had a string of relationships with a bunch of criminals before getting married. So, so inconsiderate of you. We should always be considering the feelings of those around us, especially when they are inferior. We have to make ourselves, truthfully, I think it's just the safest option to make ourselves very, very small. So that everyone can be comfortable around us. Said no one's successful and happy ever.
Number five, getting engaged before her. I've been with my husband since I was 14. We got engaged at 22, married at 26. Getting awarded for high grades in nursing school. I guess I could have dumb myself down a bit. Yeah, honestly. Nobody likes a show off. It's always best to make ourselves very, very small so that we don't upset those around us. I gotta tell you something quick. You get somewhere in life, you marry before someone else, you get a little success. If you feel resentment from other people, you will feel almost the need, like I know I do this. I tend to self-deprecate, make myself seem small. I'm working on it, okay? But I still rise in silence. I make myself a little bit small. I tend to make you know good news not as good kind of sprinkle in some some uncertainty and bad news in there just so that people won't feel bad about themselves and it's not good but that's the reality sometimes where if you don't feel supported in like the good things that are happening in life you tend to make them not as good anybody else experience this isn't it normal? I also really, really need to work on this. Like it's, it is like my people pleaser nature that I'm just like, oh, I just don't want anyone to be jealous. But lately I've been like, you know what? Stop. Your opinion of me is none of my business, okay? It's none of my business! Unless you tell me that you're unhappy that I'm happy, in which case it is my business and in which case we are no longer friends. Anyways, number seven, spending hours a week helping her with nursing school work. I was obviously trying to rub it in that I wasn't struggling not to genuinely help her. Oh, that's the worst. You know, when you, you're you like super generous with your time, people still resent you for it. I almost feel like it's better to not be generous. Uh, we, we don't do that here. Because then they get mad that you're the one that's like doing nice things. Can't win, can ya? Graduating nursing school in the same class as her, I should have known not to apply to the same school as her a couple of weeks before she did so that we weren't in the same graduating class. Becoming a nurse practitioner, which if you don't know, is similar to a doctor. Honestly, man, if in life you find yourself feeling resentful and jealous of those who are where you are, Let's just be clear that nobody's path is easy, okay? Nobody gets anything just handed to them. And if it looks easy, then they make it look easy. Every path to success, every path to quote unquote happiness is hard. And if you're not willing to put in the work and really bust your ass to get to that level or higher, that's on you, baby girl, okay? So level up or shut the f up. Now, on to the wedding drama. Her response to me and my husband getting engaged was a full-blown tantrum that was only soothed when she found out that we were planning to have a long engagement. Oh, thank God. Thank God there is still hope that I can be married before you. <laughs> Jesus. Flash forward a few years and me and my husband have moved to British Columbia for his job, but want to plan the wedding in Ontario because literally all our family is there. So we have our engagement party in Ontario and she announces her engagement at the party. You know, for someone who is mad about you upstaging her, that sure f sounds like someone that's trying to upstage you. Am I wrong? I was thrilled for her, right? Because that's how you should feel. You should be happy for people. Normalize being happy for other people and not comparing yourself. Everyone is on a f***ing journey. I hate being the center of attention, so I was glad to share the spotlight. We were planning on a big wedding. Both me and my husband have huge families. It kinda had to be huge. We sent out save the dates, we had everything booked, and I even took her wedding dress shopping with me. There was a dress I absolutely fell in love with, but it was not in my budget. So I found one that I did love that was in my budget and I moved on. Did she buy the dress? Six months before the wedding, we find out about the twins and the next month my husband gets laid off. So we cancel the big wedding and two weeks later we fly like five people out to BC and get married at a place that was super special to us. Honestly, looking back, I would have hated the big wedding and I'm so grateful we eloped. The next week we got to save the date in the mail for Tina's wedding. It was planned for the week before our original wedding. At this point, I would blame you if you don't believe that I didn't know she hated me. But I remind you that I'm autistic. I miss social cues constantly and I was really happy to have someone to talk about all of the life events that I was going through. Change in social events can be really hard for me. So having someone who I thought was there for me and going through the same stuff was really nice. I was naive and now I'm too angry to process the hurt, but it is going to hurt. So the day of the wedding, I noticed she has a lot of the same vendors that I booked. 
Mm. She bought my dream dress. There it is. And had everything almost exactly as I had planned. This wasn't too big of a deal. I picked awesome vendors. I mean, she got the dream wedding and the dream dress and she still somehow found a way to be upset. I picked awesome vendors and I'm not surprised she wanted them too. We had similar taste in dresses, baby girl. Let's stop making excuses for people. And if she could afford my dream dress, then good for her. I mean, it's really nice, the contrast, like between you not necessarily, like you didn't even bring this up until you found out that she felt this way about you. Like not once did you mention that she was wearing your dream dress. I was sat in the back next to the washroom, which I thought was really considerate considering I had two babies playing soccer with my bladder. I don't know if she meant it in that way though. Just saying. According to Anne, this was all done to ruin my wedding, to make it look like I copied her and justify how much she hated me to everyone else. She way overspent for her wedding just to make me miserable and I didn't even notice, which really pissed her off. Now, before you start feeling bad for her husband, here's the real what the moment. Apparently he has a huge pregnancy. It rhymes with stink. I think I need a shower. And kept telling her how nice I looked throughout the whole night. Okay, he's just as bad. He then had the photo of me hugging him framed and put it in his workshop. Gross. Ooh. That's delightful. Not creepy at all. They deserve each other, honestly. Needless to say, they are getting divorced now. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> I'm staying far away from crazy town. So for all of those saying that her problem wasn't the dress, you were right. Apparently the problem is I didn't make a scene when I noticed that she copied what she thought was my dream wedding and she married a complete creep. Complete creep that couldn't stop complimenting you during the wedding. I'd be annoyed at that, but I wouldn't be annoyed at you. You know what I mean? You, you gotta like be mad at like the, the guy. It's not your fault you look <laughs> sexy. Damn straight. <laughs> Girl, that was a lot. So did you wear white to the wedding? No, you didn't. But honestly, it wouldn't have mattered even if you did. <laughs> she still hates you. And that's the thing, right? Sometimes people just don't like us. And even if you never do anything, to cause that, you're still the villain in their story and you gotta be okay with that. Cause no matter what you do, no matter how small you make yourself, they're still gonna secretly resent you. So what's the f point? Just live your best life, who cares? When people dislike you, they will look for reasons to dislike you. Like they wanna find something wrong with you so bad. They just wanna know that you're not the nice person that you are because that means that they're wrong for disliking you. <laughs> to address a few comments, it was mostly her immediate family at this event. I was only invited because my mom needed a drive there. My mom sided with me. Good, there's no other option really. After reading some comments, I do agree with some of you that she had more of a problem with my pregnancy. Well, she not only had a problem with your pregnancy, but also that her new husband found you sexy. Like not only did you upstage her by being pregnant first, <laughs> It wasn't the dress. It was the fact that you were pregnant before she was, which I'm sorry, but like, what are you supposed to do about that? Was used in protection. Oh my God. I got uninvited from a wedding and I have no regrets. Ragrats. I have no rugrats. Just a heads up, all the names here are fake. Damn it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Honestly, like, please, if you're gonna post in, in our Reddit thread, can you just like make sure that we change all the names, okay? Mm, otherwise I get in trouble. <laughs> Just change all the names. This is a true story about how I got uninvited to a wedding a couple of years ago. Andrew and Rebecca were friends of my husband, Charlie and me. Charlie has two close friends from high school, Oliver and Jason. The three of them are very close. Andrew started inserting himself into the group more and more, which wasn't a bad thing. Andrew also went to school with the guys. And at this point, I thought he was a good, nice guy. Andrew ended up asking Oliver, Jason and Charlie to be groomsmen at his and Rebecca's wedding. They all agreed. And Jason was set to be the best man. Oliver has a girlfriend named Holly. I've known Oliver as long as I've been with Charlie and he's Charlie's best friend. This was the first girlfriend of his I had ever been introduced to so I made an effort to get to know her and make her feel comfortable. I like Holly a lot. She's definitely a bit shy and quiet but once you get to know her you see how funny and kind she is. I also think she's a great match for Oliver. Andrew also loves music and Charlie and I both play instruments. Charlie plays trumpet and I am a drummer. He asked us and a few others to play a few songs with him at the wedding. My boss, a friend of Andrew's was included in this group because he plays bass. He's also a officiating the wedding. Andrew and Rebecca continue wedding planning and they invite all of us to the combined bachelor and bachelorette parties, 
where everyone was all together in one house. Ooh, fun. Everyone arrived on Friday at various times because we all have different work schedules. Oliver and Holly ended up being especially late because Oliver had forgotten his wallet at home and they had to go back to get it. When we all find this out, the group immediately begins to talk poorly about Oliver and Holly. Okay. They're saying things about how Holly makes Oliver flaky and forgetful. They blamed Holly for Oliver forgetting his wallet because there was an occasion before where she had forgotten hers. I mean, the math ain't really mathing, but okay. I tell everyone to stop. They didn't know Holly like I did and hadn't made the effort to get to know her. And it isn't fair to judge them this quickly over a mistake that any of us could make. Honestly, she forgot her wallet this one time. She's such a f***ing <laughs> What an inconsiderate not the right crowd. Know your audience. It was almost like as if they were like fishing for like the right people to talk shit about her to. That's odd. They are a little too comfortable talking shit about Holly, I have to say. Eventually, Oliver and Holly arrive and everything seems fine. You know, this is super funny because it's like, it's super easy to dislike someone when you don't really necessarily make the effort to get to know them. Let me just say, if you're in a friend group and that friend has a new girlfriend, or a new boyfriend. I'm talking specifically about the girls because girls tend to be a little unwelcoming, speaking from experience. When you're entering, you know, you have a new relationship with a guy and you meet his friends, you meet his family. Understand that that girl is already very nervous about making a good impression. She might say some things that are awkward, maybe a little bit weird. Maybe she's a little quiet because she's afraid of saying the wrong thing. But like, realistically, Pull her aside, ask her how she is, ask her a couple questions about herself, make her feel like she has an ally for fuck's sakes. Like, let's stop being all clicky, like, mm -hmm, you're too good for her. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's not judge people until we actually get to know them, all right? Amen, sister. So that weekend itself went okay. The group was definitely split. One group was myself, Charlie, Oliver, Holly, and Jason. The other was everyone else. They were doing some activities that we were not comfortable with, so we didn't join. When we tried to start games that involved everyone, they weren't interested. By the time Sunday came around, I was ready to go home. I didn't want to be around people anymore and I needed to recharge. Ugh, girly, I know exactly how you feel. I put on basketball shorts and a shirt thinking we would be driving home. Holly was in pajama bottoms. All the rest of the girls were dressed for brunch, wearing nice dresses and things, and Holly and I were not told about this plan. Mm. We end up going to a cafe that doesn't serve food. I suggested to, wait. Okay. I suggested to Rebecca that we go somewhere quick like McDonald's to all be together and do something quick because I was ready to go home. I told her that even if brunch didn't work out, I was pretty tired and I would be okay with leaving. We end up finding another brunch place. On the drive home with Jason and Charlie, Jason tells us how Holly is not invited to the wedding. Oh. I was confused. How could she not be invited when she was invited to the bachelor weekend and paid toward the Airbnb to be there? Honestly, this sounds very familiar. I'll just say that. Tell me, you must. Jason told us that Andrew and Rebecca didn't like Holly and the way Oliver was when she was around. They didn't like that Oliver was smoking weed more and that he was always attentive to her needs when they want his full attention to be on them on their wedding day. He just kind of sounds like a good boyfriend. Like, what do you mean? I mean, maybe the marijuana, if he wasn't smoking it as much before, is a bit of a change, but... They're mad at him for giving her attention? Bros before her. They also didn't like how she did not make an effort to know them. It's a little intimidating being part of like a new group of people. I will just say that, especially if you're shy. I was fuming. Andrew and Rebecca hadn't made an effort to get to know Holly and judged her very quickly for mistakes any of us could have made. She's shy and Andrew and Rebecca could have approached her first so they could get to know each other. It goes both ways. Also, they made her pay to be at the bachelor party when she didn't know she was not invited to the wedding. Yeah, that's a move. Charlie later asks Andrew about Holly not being invited to the wedding. His response is as follows. Yeah. 100%. With Holly, Oliver is too unpredictable. And at my wedding, I need him conscious and paying attention to the festivities and the schedule. Not scrambling, looking for Holly's lost vape or being late to the wedding because Holly put in the wrong directions, which by the way, she did this weekend, which was another reason why they were so late. These are such trivial things to like judge someone over. I have given her a chance time and time again to show that she has her shit together and she does not shit together. Like, don't exclude people 
for reasons like this. Exclude people because they do you wrong, that they, they do something genuinely mean to you. If this was a game of beer die, then yeah, I'm fine with Holly, not at my wedding. Think about it. They've literally forgot to bring ID twice now to events, once at Jason's birthday party and this past weekend. Also in mind, Holly opened the door for division at the bachelor party, which was the final straw for me. She was obviously unaware of the context of the situation and consistently isolated herself from the group. Didn't you guys try to play games with them and they said no? After hearing of her disapproval from several party members, half the party members tried to keep her included by talking with her and spending time. So Holly's isolationism drew the group consistently away from where Rebecca and I were physically at times. It felt like some of us didn't even want to be with Rebecca and me. Not sure if that's Holly's fault. Think about it. This was our wedding party. Literally the friends we love most in our lives. Why the hell would we want there to be cliques? Cliques. I don't know, man. It kind of just sounds like your friends are actually considerate and noticed that she felt uncomfortable and they went over there to try and include her and you didn't. Oliver's acceptance of being a groomsman in my wedding predates his relationship with Holly. I've been more than courteous to have her invited to the festivities that I have, but certainly have no obligation to invite her to my wedding. No, you don't, but I mean, kind of sounds like you're being a bit of a butthead, eh? I was shocked when I heard this because Andrew seemed kind and easygoing. I had no idea he had these feelings or was able to be this mean. After receiving this message from Andrew, Charlie told Oliver that Andrew and Rebecca were gonna tell him Holly was not invited to the wedding. I feel like he's gonna not like that very much. He did not want Oliver to be blindsided by the news. Eventually, Andrew and Rebecca met with Oliver and told him Holly wasn't invited. They told him it was due to a venue capacity issue. Why, come on, let's be, let's be at least honest about why we don't want people at our weddings. They doubled down on the lie a few days later when Oliver asked about it. After that happened, Holly reached out and asked why and if I knew anything. I sent her exactly what Andrew said to Charlie. After seeing this and showing Oliver, Oliver decided to drop out of the wedding altogether. Good. But he did let Andrew and Rebecca know that I told him what was actually said about them behind their backs. Andrew and Rebecca were furious with me. <laughs> <laughs> they called Charlie and me to confront us about it. Like they just said exactly what you said. So if that made someone not want to go to your wedding, that's on you. I could tell they were expecting me to apologize, but I stood my ground. Apologize for what? For not keeping up their lie. I stand behind the choice I made to tell Ollie and Holliver, Holliver, Ollie and Holliver, sorry, the truth about how Andrew and Rebecca were treating them and what the actual situation was. I completely disagree with the way Andrew and Rebecca were acting and handling the situation and told them that. They ended up hanging up on us because Rebecca got so worked up. Andrew texted Charlie later saying, I was no longer invited to the wedding. <laughs> I told Charlie Andrew needs to come to me and tell me properly that I'm not invited. Otherwise, I will be showing up. Oh, okay. We're choosing violence today. I ended up texting an apology to Andrew and Rebecca the next day. I apologized for not coming to them first about how angry I was with how they were treating Holly and Oliver. I could have given them the chance to be honest and I didn't. I made it very clear, however, that I'm not sorry for telling Holly and Oliver the truth. I told them they were being bad friends to them. If Oliver was important enough that they wanted him as a groomsman, he deserved to be treated better and Holly and Oliver both deserve an apology from them. Holly ended up thanking me for being honest with her. She told me she struggles with autism and ADHD and being in large social situations is overwhelming for her. She appreciated me making an effort to get to know her because it isn't easy for her to do. This broke my heart. Oh, you poor thing. My boss was still playing bass and officiating the wedding. Since I'm no longer invited to the wedding, I was no longer playing drums at it. Oh right, you were in the band. When the band rehearsal for the wedding was a day away, I decided to tell my boss what happened. I wanted him to hear from me why I was uninvited. I didn't trust Andrew and Rebecca to be truthful and I wanted to stay on good terms with my boss so I wouldn't lose my job. Clever girl. After speaking to me, my boss reached out to Andrew and Rebecca to get their side. Later, he told me he was hoping there was a piece of the story I was missing. He was really hoping there was something Holly had done to validate the way that Andrew and Rebecca were treating her. There wasn't. And my boss ended up dropping out of the wedding as well. Wow. So you not only got yourself uninvited, you like pretty much got a lot of people to drop out of this wedding. My boss's daughter also struggles with autism. Hey, there you go. And he says he could not stand in front of a crowd of people and say nice things about Andrew and Rebecca when they would treat someone with a disability like this. Andrew later texted Oliver and asked if Holly had autism and claimed that I was weaponizing my coworkers against him. Okay, well, I mean, maybe he didn't know, but like, at the same time, you still ostracized a person because they were shy 
and like nervous around you. With me uninvited and my boss, Oliver, dropping out, Andrew and Rebecca were down to a drummer, groomsman, bass player, and officiant less than two weeks before their wedding day. Charlie ended up going to the wedding. I knew if he didn't, his friendships with Oliver and Jason would not be the same. Oliver understood, and the three of them are still friends today. Oliver, Holly, Oliver are also still a couple today, and they now live together and have a cat. Oh, that's cute. The icing on the cake is that Charlie said the wedding was just fine. I saw the photos later. It was pretty, but Rebecca's dress didn't fit right. <laughs> Jesus. The open bar was closed less than an hour into the reception and guests had to pay for drinks most of the night. Okay. The food was bad. After the <laughs> I love how you're just like, well, it's bad. After the wedding, Andrew and Rebecca wanted to keep the party going and went to some nearby bars with the bridal party, but they couldn't because Rebecca forgot her wallet. Well, well, well. Oh my God, that is so funny. And if that isn't the perfect ending, I don't know what is. Nope, nope, that pretty much, uh couldn't have ended better, in my opinion. Good for you for sticking to your guns and for sticking up for someone who, like you could have just as easily gone with the crowd and not gotten involved. But like, it makes me really happy that you stuck up for her. Any new girlfriend that's introduced into a group or introduced to like parents and family, it's a really, nerve wracking situation. I found that most of the time it was the women that made me feel unwelcome. Three years later, things are better now, right? Cause I stuck around obviously. But there was definitely that period of like, mm, who's she? Mm. Hi. Uh, it's my thing to like, if I see someone alone at a party, I will totally do this. I will totally go and like chat them up, see how they're doing. Cause I've been that person at a party. You never know what somebody's going through. And if you just kind of like show them that not everybody's a bitch, it's the nice thing to do. This has been Sailor Potato. <laughs> Subscribe.